Good morning. Good morning. Our service this morning is right one. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, who art the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of thy name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. First reading is from Exodus. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to God, to call, turned aside to see, God, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you when you have brought the people out of Egypt. You shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, 
the God of your ancestors has sent me to you. And they asked me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, thus you shall say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this my title for all generations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll pray Psalm 105 responsibly by whole verse. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord in his strength, continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. The offspring of Abraham his servant, O children of Jacob his chosen. Israel came into Egypt and Jacob became a sojourner in the land of Ham. The Lord made his people exceedingly fruitful. He made them stronger than their enemies. Whose heart he turned so that they hated his people and dealt unjustly with his servants. He sent Moses his servant and Aaron whom he had chosen. And all together, Hallelujah! The second reading is from Romans. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the light of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Now, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with the good. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord. This must never happen to you. But he turned to Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves 
and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what he has done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. I speak in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Take up your cross, the Savior said, if you, my disciples, would be. Take up your cross with willing heart and humbly follow after me. This is the first verse in the hymn, Take Up Your Cross, the Savior Said. And this sums up Jesus' message in our gospel for this morning. It is easy for us to imagine that this would be a reality for the disciples during and after the time of Jesus. Between the first and fourth century, Rome had substantial power and crucifixion was a means of capital punishment, mostly deemed for those to be political or religious agitators. The notion of taking up a cross and following Jesus has manifested in very ways throughout the centuries. One such way can be seen through the life and ministry of Dietrich Bonhoeffer. He was a German theologian and pastor who spoke out against the Nazi regime during World War II. His resistance against Hitler's regime culminated with him being hung in a concentration camp at Flossenburg. For Bonhoeffer, discipleship directly aligned solely on claiming Jesus as Lord and to turn away from the temptation of worldly notions, standards, expectations, and in the case of the Third Reich, aligning the church with the new Nazi regime's ideology and regime. Bonhoeffer, along with other theologians, including Karl Barth and Martin Niemöller, established the Confessing Church, which announced publicly in its Barman Declaration in 1934 that its allegiance was first to Christ, saying, we repudiate the false teachings that the church can and must recognize yet another, yet other happenings and powers, personalities and truths as divine revelation alongside this one word of God. His conviction to remain true to Christ and to bear soul allegiance to him resulted in him being interred in a concentration camp and eventually executed. Take up your cross then in his strength, and calmly every danger brave. It guides you to abundant life and leads to victory or the grave. This morning's gospel falls on the heels of Peter confessing Jesus to be the Messiah. Peter, who by his confession had been elevated to be the rock on which the church would be built. Yet within the next breath, he quickly fell to becoming a stumbling block. Jesus was telling his disciples that he must, under, must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. 
Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord. This must never happen to you. And he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples this. If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. A new layer of discipleship has been revealed. It is not just about following Jesus now, but to deny oneself and to carry one's cross. To say it another way, it is to forget and lose sight of oneself and of one's own interest. It is ceasing to make the self the object of one's life and actions. To deny ourselves and take up our cross to follow Jesus is to live fully for him in all aspects of life, to commit ourselves to him in all aspects of life, even to the point of death. It is placing the gospel at the center of all things and to allow the truth of the gospel reflect our voice, our actions and convictions and having our confession of that gospel to guide us. Jesus finishes speaking to his disciples saying, for what will it profit them? if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what he has done. How might we unpack and understand this passage today? I would say that the first step is to reflect on our baptism. After a priest baptizes someone in the Anglican Episcopal tradition, they place their hand on the person's head and mark on the forehead the sign of the cross, often with chrism, saying to them, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. In that moment, we have been set apart to follow Jesus. And as we grow in our faith, we begin to understand that living our life in accordance with worldly standards, expectations, success, or ideals don't align with what the gospel teaches. The cross that Jesus calls us to carry symbolizes the necessity of total commitment, even unto death on our part. It is a sacrificial love, and yet it is the cross of Christ, not our own cross that we carry, it is the cross of Christ that saves. And our salvation entails the death of ourselves. Let me say that again. Yet it is the cross of Christ, not our own cross, that we bear that saves. It is the cross of Christ. And our salvation entails the death of ourselves. We live in a world where we are tempted by so many things to not only turn away from the truth of the gospel, but to turn away from carrying our cross. Why? It is easier. It's 
more comfortable. When we aren't carrying our cross, we aren't convicted to speak out. When we aren't carrying our cross, we put our own self above others. When we aren't carrying our cross, we aren't following Jesus. Following Jesus is costly. For some, like the martyrs gone before us, like Bonhoeffer, whom we heard of this morning, following Jesus cost them their lives. It is a sacrificial love. We can see what that means as we look at the Sermon on the Mount or as Jesus' teachings on serving to masters and throughout the gospel and his parables. And we can also glean what it means to live sacrificially in the epistles, including the passage that was appointed for today in Romans. Following Jesus, confessing and committing ourselves to denying ourselves is what it means to carry our cross. Yet it is not that cross or works that save us. It is only the cross of Jesus that does so. Take up your cross and follow me. Nor think till death to lay it down. For only those who bear the cross may hope to wear the glorious crown. Amen. My brothers and sisters, if you are able, I would invite you to stand as we affirm our faith and confess our faith with the Nicene Creed, which can be found on page four in your service booklet. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate for the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially for the Most Reverend Justin Welby, Archbishop of Canterbury, for the Most Reverend Michael Curry, our presiding bishop, for the Right Reverend Eugene Sutton, and our bishop, for the, our bishop and for the Right Reverend Robert Eloff, our assisting bishop, 
We pray for the rector, the leaders, the wardens, the vestry, the staff, and all members of Friends of St. John's Church in Kingsville. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, that they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially for Donald, our president, for Larry, our governor, for Jack, Brandon, and John, who lead our city and counties, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, Remembering those in our hearts, either silently or aloud. At this time, Lord, we pray for all teachers who are returning to work. We pray for them, whether they teach online, whether they go into the schools, we pray for the students as they return to their schooling. We pray, Lord, that their anxiety might be relieved as they venture into this new way of learning. We pray for their protection. And we also pray for the parents and guardians of all the students that are going back whether they be going to preschool or going back to university. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service and to grant us grace so to follow the good example of St. John and all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee and thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in thy will, and walk in thy ways, to the glory of thy name. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon, and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you.
love announcements. You may be seated. <laughs> Just a couple of announcements uh, for this morning. For those who um, who know of friends who would join us normally online, um, and if they didn't catch the the little blurb that I put up on Facebook saying we're having trouble, we couldn't find in the connection for the internet, whether we took it off of the Wi-Fi, for it to roam, or even back on the Wi-Fi. So maybe it's just one of those days, I don't know. <laughs> so um, so it will be posted up on our, our YouTube page and also on our Facebook page. As we are going into um, the program year, things will be a little different. Um, as many of you know, I will be um, doing Sunday School online, and I will be putting together a YouTube uh, video uh, and, and, be, and posting it, which would allow the parents at their own time and leisure to access that um, whenever they're able to. It helps to leave the anxiety of having to come to church, uh, organize a time, trying to maintain safe distance. Most of the children that come here are under five or six so um and if you have any um any friends or, or family who would be interested uh please let me know and um and if you're in if, if they're in the area i can prepare little packets uh for them for the parents to pick up and for those who are joining us online i know that there will be some uh, joining us um, outside of our community and I can prepare something for the parents or guardians online, email them, and, um, and we will all be able to do this together. It's, it's a learning experience for me, it's a learning experience for them. Are there any announcements this morning? Woody! Okay. Because we go back to the two services yes. next week, next, you know, next week, will we still use these or do the, the parables do something? No, that's a very good question. Starting next week, we are going back to the two services, the 8 a.m., which is right one, and the 1030, which is right two. If you keep your books, um, and reuse them, that, that would be very helpful. Uh, we still are not using our prayer books. And, um, and so we're asking that you cling tight to the paper ones for now. We're in the process of getting a new printer. Our printer at the office had gone to put. So, um, so making mass quantities of these, um, is very difficult. So, yes. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Second. second question. Will Will Andy send out what has been the traditional schedule? You know, for usher, reader, um, whatever. You know, will she also be sending that out next week for? Right, yes. She will send that out, but we will still be going with the same format right now um, to have one reader um, coming up and um, reading the lessons. We still, because we're only still administering the host for communion, we will not have a chalice fair. We will not have acolytes. I'm trying to minimize, um, we do have a fairly small uh, chancel and, uh, and uh, altar sanctuary. And so just to maintain, being able to maintain safe um, social distancing, the acolytes and the chalices will be, um, will be able to sit with the congregation. <laughs> um, again, it's just trying to maintain social distancing as, um, as we slowly open up. Um, 
with the different phases, once there's a vaccine, then we can return to some form of familiarity that we had prior uh, to the pandemic. Um, one thing I also say is that um, if God forbid things get worse again, um, we will have to go back to online worship. But of course, we, we're all praying for that, not just us here at St. John's, but throughout the world, that, um, that we will be able to go forward and not have to go back. So, yeah. Barb Daniel. Um, are, are you still looking to have um, some people uh, meet to discuss that one little structure to the exact title? Your educate your book education. Evangelism. Sorry? Your evangelism study. Yeah. Oh! Yeah. Yes! Do you know what, what uh, day, night, whatever you're thinking of using? I was thinking of doing it on a, um, on a Thursday night. Um, this is wonderful. This is the first time someone has inquired about it, so... I was just kind of holding it off and just seeing if anybody was interested. But thank you, yes. Thursday night, I will uh, begin to plan one day. Um, I seem to have lost my copy, and I ordered another copy of um, Evangelism for Normal People. And, um, and for this study, there are study questions. And one of the things that I'm hoping to do is being able to... Um, bring in uh, John Bowen, who is the author and was one of my professors um, at, uh, at Wycliffe when I was in seminary and who is also the head of the Institute of Evangelism at the University of Toronto. And to have him perhaps come in and to, um, to guide us in, in one of our discussions. So I will definitely get on that now, Mark. Thank you. And for those uh, who are interested, please uh, let me know. And then that way we can go forward. I'm excited now. Hymn sing. Hmm? The hymn sing starts again Wednesday. The, the hymn sing uh, will start. Um, I'm going to just double check with Nancy and um, and see if, if we will be getting this Wednesday. But um, if we need to start the following Wednesday, then uh, we'll, we'll get that all set. We're still... Um, tightening it up. Walk in love as Christ loved us, offering himself a sacrifice to God.
All things come of thee, O Lord. The Lord be with you. And all spirit. Lift up your hearts. You lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is very neat, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we loud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, O Lord our God, for that thou dost create heaven and earth, and didst make us in thine own image, and of thy tender mercy didst give thy only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world, and did institute in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy people do celebrate and make with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and with thy word and Holy Spirit to bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies. Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and also that we and all thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. <clears throat> and now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. 
we have Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, as you please, hallelujah. A prayer for an act of reception for those who are unable to be with us today. In union, dear Lord, with the faithful at every altar of thy of where thy blessed body and blood are being offered to the Father. I desire to offer thee praise and thanksgiving. I believe that thou art truly present in the Holy Sacrament. And since I cannot receive thee sacramentally, I beseech thee to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself unto thee and embrace thee with all the affections of my soul. Let me never be separated from thee. Let me live and die in thy love. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God.
pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in thy holy mysteries, with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, that we are very members and corporate in the body, and that we are people, and are also heirs through the hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you. Amen. Let us go forth into the world to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.